Chapter 14 Mint App Part 1 Before Class Quiz Note, I have cut repeat questions in this video. Question 1. When does stress occur? A. In circumstances that have aversive or negative consequences. B. In circumstances that threaten well-being and tax coping abilities. C. In circumstances that will lead to undesirable and unavoidable outcomes. D. In circumstances that a person doesn't understand or is powerless to change. It's B. Stress occurs in circumstances that threaten well-being and tax coping abilities. It's not A, C or D because stress can also arise in positive or neutral situations. Question 2. Which statement about the nature of stress is not accurate? A. Stress is cumulative and it can build slowly over time. B. Stress only occurs when a person faces an overwhelming, traumatic crisis. C. Everyday problems and minor nuisances are important forms of stress. D. Major stressful events can trigger a cascade of minor stresses. It's B so everything else is true. Stress is cumulative and it can build slowly over time. C. Everyday problems and minor nuisances are important forms of stress. D. Major stressful events can trigger a cascade of minor stresses. Question 3. Sheila has to get her passport from her safety deposit box so that she can't take an international flight the next day. When she gets to the bank she realizes she left her safety deposit key at home, but remembers there is a spare key in her husband's glove compartment. She drives to where his car is parked but realizes she doesn't have his car key with her. By the time she finds him and gets his keys, she has only 10 minutes left before the bank closes. What is the impact of these types of everyday problems? A. They often have a significant effect on physical health, but little impact on mental health. B. They have little impact on physical health, but a significant effect on mental health. C. They typically have very little impact on either physical or mental health. D. They can often have a significant effect on both physical and mental health. It's D. They can often have a significant effect on both physical and mental health. Question 4. What is the main influence on the experience of feeling stress? A. Overall magnitude of the stressful event. B. Overall state of health at the time. C. Age and gender of a person. D. How a person appraises an event. It's D. How a person appraises an event. Because if a person isn't stressed by an event, then they do not feel the effects of stress regardless of the event. Question 5. Annabelle is often described as anxious and neurotic. How does Annabelle likely compare to her friends in terms of her reactions to stress? A. She is more likely to perceive events as stressful. B. She is less likely to perceive events as stressful. C. She is less likely to use defensive coping strategies. D. She is more likely to use defensive coping strategies. It's A. She is more likely to perceive events as stressful. Remember neurotic means insecure. Question 6. Which of the following is not part of your textbook's definition of stress? A. Stress refers to things that threaten or are perceived to threaten one's well-being. B. Stress refers to events that are negative or undesirable. C. Stress refers to circumstances or situations. Things that are external. D. Stress refers to things that tax one's coping abilities. It's B. So the true things are that stress refers to things that threaten or are perceived to threaten one's well-being. Stress refers to circumstances or situations. Things that are external de-stress refers to things that tax one's coping abilities. Question 7. Which circumstances would meet your textbook's definition for stress? A. Tyler's car is skidding out of control on an icy road, and he can't prevent it from sliding into the ditch. B. Carol has three major term papers due on the last day of the term, which is just over a month away. C. Gerald plans to propose to his girlfriend but needs over $2,000 to buy her an engagement ring. D. Darla's mother suffers from dementia, and she has decided to put her mother in long-term care. It's A. Tyler's car is skidding out of control on an icy road, and he can't prevent it from sliding into the ditch. Question 11. Sarah had been in the lead for most of a 50-kilometer bike race. When she was less than 100 meters from the finish line, her front tire went flat and she watched her opponent sail past her to take first place. Based on stress research, what would Sarah most likely experience? A. Feelings of change. B. Feelings of frustration. C. Feelings of burnout. D. Feelings of conflict. It's B. Feelings of frustration because a goal wasn't achieved. For A. Feelings of change are noticeable alterations in living circumstances that require adjustment. For C. Burnout involves physical and emotional exhaustion, cynicism and a lowered sense of self-efficacy that can be brought on gradually by chronic work-related stress. She's not exhausted. 
4D feelings of conflict occur when two or more incompatible motivations or behavior impulses compete for expression. Question 12. What type of stress is experienced when two or more incompatible motivations compete? A. Adjustment B. Conflict C. Frustration D. Pressure. It's B. Conflict. For A. Adjustment is not a kind of stress. For C. Pressure involves expectations or demands that a person behave in a certain way. Question 13. Dave is trying to decide whether he should ask his boss for a raise. Although he could use the extra money, he is afraid his boss may expect him to take on more responsibilities and he already feels overwhelmed by his workload. In this situation, which type of conflict is Dave facing? A. Approach avoidance B. Approach approach C. Frustration pressure D. Avoidance avoidance. It's A. Approach avoidance. Because he must choose whether to pursue a single goal that has both attractive and unattractive aspects for B approach approach refers to a choice between two attractive goals for C frustration pressure is not a kind of choice for D. Avoidance avoidance conflict. A choice must be made between two unattractive goals. Question 14. In the past three months, Salvador got married and graduated from university. His friends tell him he has no worries. But he tells them that good things can be just as stressful as negative things. Which researchers would agree with Salvador A. Friedman and Roseman B. Seligman C. Holmes and Ray D. D. Matteo? It's C. Holmes and Ray he. For A. Friedman and Roseman did research on the relationship between coronary disease and personality. For B. Seligman reported that some people respond to stress in a fatalistic way and just give up in stressful situations. For D.D. Matteo studies patient behavior and has researched communication between healthcare providers and patients. Question 15. What occurs when a person is expected to behave in a certain way? A. Conflict B. Pressure C. Stress D. Frustration. It's B. Pressure. For A. Feelings of conflict occur when two or more incompatible motivations or behavior impulses compete for expression. For C it's not stress because stress occurs in circumstances that threaten or are perceived to threaten a person's well-being and thereby tax that person's coping abilities. I feel that conflict is a type of stress but whatever for D. Feelings of frustration occur when goals aren't achieved. Question 16. Grover is already late for an important appointment when he realizes that he is almost out of gas. He stops to fill up and the clerk has trouble getting approval on his credit card. When he finally pulls out of the service station, the traffic is crawling because of an accident. He is so upset over the whole sequence of events that he starts to pound on his steering wheel. According to research into stress, when Grover pounds on his steering wheel, what is he experiencing? A frustration B change C conflict D learned helplessness. It's A frustration because his goals are being achieved it's not B change. Because his situation isn't permanently changed and he has to adjust to it now. It's not C because there's no opposition. 4. D no because he is not given up. Question 18. Jose has been losing his hair for the past 5 years. He has just heard about a new medication that can help some men regrow their hair. But the main side effect of the drug is an increase in impotence. While he decides whether or not to start taking the medication. What state is Jose most likely experiencing? A frustration B cognitive dissonance C pressure D vacillation. It's the vacillation the inability to decide between different opinions or actions for A frustration occurs when goals are being achieved for B cognitive dissonance is an uncomfortable feeling that occurs when a person holds two conflicting beliefs simultaneously for C pressure refers to expectations or demands. Question 19. Barbara recently received a promotion at work that allowed her to buy the new condominium she has been considering for the past six months. The same day she found out she is expecting her first grandchild, which made her extremely happy. All this happened at the same time that she and her husband have been planning a family cruise to celebrate their 25th wedding anniversary. At this point, Barbara can't imagine being any happier than she is right now. According to Holmes and Ray, what is Barbara most likely experiencing a higher level of stress B little or no stress C learned helplessness D burnout. It's a higher level of stress. Because Holmes and Ray he say that even positive events are a form of stress if they change your life. Question 20. What factor is more strongly related to measures of mental health than scores on the social readjustment rating scale? A frustration B conflict C change D pressure. It's D pressure. Because while the social readjustment rating scale measures all kinds of events, the negative ones produce more stress than positive ones and those usually involve pressure. 
That is not all change is bad. Question 21. What are the three stages of Celi's general adaptation syndrome A alarm, resistance, and exhaustion B recognition, resistance, and recovery C recognition, evaluation, and reaction D alarm, adaptation, and recovery. It's A alarm, resistance, and exhaustion. Question 22. What brain areas appear to moderate stress A cerebellum and parasympathetic nervous system B cerebellum and sympathetic nervous system C hypothalamus and parasympathetic nervous system D hypothalamus and sympathetic nervous system It's D hypothalamus and sympathetic nervous system The sympathetic nervous system activates during times of stress Does this with the hypothalamus The cerebellum is responsible for coordinating voluntary movements The parasympathetic nervous system calms you down Question 24. Which physiological change is a consequence related to the release of catecholamines in the body? A decrease in heart rate, B decrease in rate of digestion, C decrease in visual sensitivity, D decrease in oxygen consumption. It's B decrease in rate of digestion. Catecholamines decrease the rate of digestion to funnel power to increasing heart rate, oxygen consumption and visual sensitivity. Question 24. Which statement best describes the use of coping to deal with stress A it is always adaptive B it is always maladaptive C it is not coping unless it is adaptive D it may be adaptive or maladaptive. It's D it may be adaptive or maladaptive. Question 25. What term did Martin Seligman use to refer to passive behaviors produced by exposure to unavoidable aversive events A post-traumatic stress B burnout C learned helplessness D coronary prone behavior. It's C. Learned helplessness. Question 26. According to the inverted U hypothesis, what is the effect of high arousal A. It leads to impaired performance on any type of task B. It has no effect on performance of tasks of moderate complexity C. It is most beneficial to performance on relatively simple tasks D. It is most beneficial to performance on extremely complex tasks. It's C. It is most beneficial to performance on relatively simple tasks. Question 27. In the general adaptation syndrome described by Selye, at what phase does physiological arousal stabilize at a higher level and coping efforts begin A resistance B alarm reaction C exhaustion D stress recovery. It's A resistance. For B an alarm reaction occurs when an organism first recognizes the existence of a threat. For C exhaustion, the body's resources for fighting stress are limited. If the stress can't be overcome. The body's resources may be depleted. Question 28. What occurs when the adrenal medulla is stimulated? A large amounts of catecholamines are released into the bloodstream. B. The hormone ACTH is secreted and circulates throughout the body. C. Corticosteroids are absorbed by the adrenal glands. D. The parasympathetic nervous system is activated. It's a large amounts of catecholamines are released into the bloodstream. For BACTH is secreted when the hypothalamus activates the pituitary gland. For C corticosteroids are secreted by the adrenal glands. For D the parasympathetic nervous system is what calms you down. The sympathetic nervous system is activated. Question 29. Having experienced numerous setbacks in her life, Teresa no longer feels in control and has become passive and apathetic. What would Martin Seligman say that Teresa is displaying A burnout B post-traumatic stress disorder C learned helplessness D the fight or flight response? It's C learned helplessness. Clue. Seligman was all about learned helplessness which involves becoming passive and apathetic. For A burnout is exhaustion from prolonged stress. For B post-traumatic stress disorder, it's an enduring psychological disturbance from a major traumatic event. For D the fight or flight response is a physiological reaction to threat in which the autonomic nervous system mobilizes the organism. Question 30. What defense mechanism involves protecting oneself from unpleasant reality by refusing to perceive or face it? A fantasy B overcompensation C undoing D denial of reality. It's D denial of reality. Question 31. Montgomery works as a police officer, which can be very stressful. Based on the research on burnout, what is a likely result of his job? Related stress A he will increase his work activity to compensate for work stress B he will experience stress related depressive episodes C he will become so focused on his job that he will be reluctant to take sick days D he will compensate for the higher levels of stress by becoming less cynical. It's B he will experience stress related depressive episodes.
For A he will decrease his work activity to compensate for work stress for C he'll take more sick days for D will become more cynical. Question 22. Which of the following does not contribute to burnout? A too much autonomy on the job. B lack of social support in the workplace. C inadequate recognition by supervisors. D too much work that needs to be done. It's a note the following contributes to burnout. Lack of autonomy on the job. Lack of social support in the workplace. C inadequate recognition by supervisors. D too much work that needs to be done. Question 33. What is the name for the trauma-based anxiety disorder that involves an enduring psychological disturbance attributed to the experience of a major traumatic event A burnout B schizophrenia C learned helplessness D post traumatic stress disorder It's D post traumatic stress disorder for A burnout is exhaustion from prolonged stress For B schizophrenia isn't caused by stress It's a mental disorder For C learned helplessness is becoming passive and apathetic from stress Question 34. Six months ago, a tornado touched down in the city where Caesar lives. Although his house was not damaged, houses less than a block away were torn from their foundations and their contents totally destroyed. Recently, Caesar has become extremely irritable and avoids his neighbors and has put his own house up for sale. At night he often dreams that he hears the tornado, and he relives the destruction that he saw immediately after the disaster. What is Caesar quite likely experiencing a post-traumatic stress disorder B burnout C general adaptation syndrome D catastrophic thinking. It's a post-traumatic stress disorder. Question 35. What percent of war zone veterans experience PTSD A 5% B 10% C 20% D 40%? It's B 10%. Question 36. Which health problem is not associated with burnout A memory loss B heart disease C asthma D cancer? It's D burnout is associated with an increased risk for memory loss, heart disease, arthritis, ulcers, asthma, and migraines. Question 37. Lisa has been working for several months on a big project at work. Every day she works long after all her colleagues have left for the day, and because of her deadline, she does not feel that she is in control of her work schedule. To top it off, her schedule does not allow her any time to spend with her friends and family. Which of the following would suggest Lisa is suffering from burnout A even though Lisa is feeling exhausted, her work productivity remains high B because Lisa is exhausted. Her work productivity starts to drop C even though Lisa is feeling exhausted, she does not develop any physical illnesses D because Lisa is exhausted, she overcompensates and her commitments to her job increases. It's B because Lisa is exhausted, her work productivity starts to drop. Question 38. What is not a component of burnout A lower self-efficacy B cynicism C exhaustion D physical illness? It's D physical illness because that's a consequence of burnout. Question 39. Which of the following best describes post-traumatic stress disorder PTSD A physical and emotional exhaustion that is brought on gradually by chronic work? Related stress that is the result of burnout B passive and debilitating behaviors that people can develop following exposure to unavoidable aversive events C anxiety disorder characterized by enduring psychological disturbance attributed to the experience of a traumatic event D psychological disorder that involves persistent intrusive thoughts and urges to engage in senseless rituals. It's C anxiety disorder characterized by enduring psychological disturbance attributed to the experience of a traumatic event. For A that's burnout. For B that's learned helplessness. For D that's obsessive compulsive disorder. Question 41. Assuming that none of the following individuals is a current smoker, who would be at the lowest risk for coronary heart disease? A someone who has frequent angry outbursts. B someone with a type B personality. C someone who suffers from bipolar disorder. D someone with a type A personality. Mintap says it's a someone who has frequent angry outbursts. But the textbook contradicts that with a meta-analysis of available evidence concluded that in the two hours immediately following an outburst of anger. There is nearly a five-fold jump in an individual's risk for a heart attack and a more than three-fold increase in the risk for a stroke. Would the correct answer not be B someone with a type B personality? Question 42. Vernon is extremely satisfied with his life. He has been in his job for 12 months, and he gets along well with everyone. He is extremely patient when he explains new projects to his co-workers, and he always seems relaxed and in control. 
which statement most likely describes Vernon's personality A. He has a type B personality B. He has a type A personality C. He has a pro-social personality disorder D. He has a dependent personality disorder. It's A. He has a type B personality. Question 43. Kevin is an impatient, highly competitive individual who is easily provoked into angry confrontations. He never seems to unwind or enjoy himself, and he frequently works late and works on weekends. According to Friedman and Rosamann, what is he at risk of developing a post-traumatic stress disorder B coronary heart disease C different types of cancer D ulcers and stomach disorders? It's B coronary heart disease. Question 44. How can higher levels of stress make people more susceptible to diseases A by interfering with the normal functioning of the hormonal response B by decreasing the activity of the sympathetic nervous system C by reducing levels of immune functioning D by increasing parasympathetic nervous system activity. It's C by reducing levels of immune functioning. Question 45. Which statement best summarizes the relation between stress and illness A the relation is correlational and another variable, that is, personality, could inflate the correlation B although the relation is correlational. Strong and consistent correlations have been reported see most research suggests that neuroticism can explain the relation between stress and illness D the relation is causal and research has concluded that stress causes a variety of illnesses. It's A the relation is correlational and another variable, that is, personality, could inflate the correlation. Question 46. What percent of heart related deaths is attributed to coronary heart disease? Involves a decrease in blood flow in the coronary arteries A less than 25 B just over 40 C approximately 65 D approximately 90. It's D approximately 90%. Question 47. Which personality type might apply to someone who is hard driving, ambitious, and impatient A type B personality B antisocial personality C type A personality D dependent personality. It's C type A personality. Question 48. Beth is an excellent student, spends hours on her schoolwork, and is never satisfied with anything less than the highest mark. When group work is assigned, she quickly becomes annoyed with other group members who haven't done their work. Which personality classification most likely applies to Beth A type B personality B antisocial personality disorder C type A personality D dependent personality disorder? It's C type A personality. Question 50. How does major depression impact a person's chance of developing heart disease A it does not change the chance B it decreases the chance C it roughly doubles the chance D it nearly triples the chance. It's D it nearly triples the chance. Question 51. What is social support A a general tendency to seek help from individuals outside a person's own family B informal workplace networks among individuals who perform similar tasks C government. Sponsored programs designed to offer aid in times of crisis D the various types of aid and comfort provided by a person's friends and family. It's D the various types of aid and comfort provided by a person's friends and family. Question 52. According to many studies, which statement best describes the link between social support and immune function A they are uncorrelated variables B they are negatively correlated variables C they are confounded variables D they are positively correlated variables. It's D they are positively correlated variables. Question 53. In a recent meta-analysis, researchers examined survival after illness. What factor was common among the patients with increased odds of survival A type B personality B strong social support C optimistic explanatory style D exercise on a regular basis? It's B strong social support. Question 54. On average, what type of person is least likely to become ill A a person with a pro-social personality B a person with an optimistic personality C a person with a type A personality D a person with a type B personality? It's B, a person with an optimistic personality. Question 55. Based on the resilience research, who is most likely to have higher resilience and more positive outcomes? A, Bob, who has dealt with intermediate levels of adversity. B, John, who has had very few major negative life events. C, Will, who has faced many traumatic events as an adult. D, Tim, who has learned to deny traumatic events. It's A, Bob, who has dealt with intermediate levels of adversity. Question 57. David feels isolated and does not spend time with his friends or family. 
He just found out that he has cancer and he is waiting for the results of tests to determine what treatment is appropriate. What would you predict about David's mortality? A. The lack of social support will decrease David's mortality by about 10%. B. The lack of social support will decrease David's mortality by about 25%. C. The lack of social support will decrease David's mortality by about 50%. D. The lack of social support will not have an effect on David's mortality. It's C. The lack of social support will decrease David's mortality by about 50%. Question 59. Compared to pessimists, how do optimists function? A. They seek more social support from different sources. B. They cope with stress in more adaptive ways. C. They are more likely to use defensive coping strategies. D. They are more willing to seek medical attention. It's B. They cope with stress in more adaptive ways. Question 60. Which big five personality trait has been most strongly linked to greater longevity and overall physical health? A. Conscientiousness. B. Openness to experience. C. Agreeableness. D. Extroversion. It's a conscientiousness. Question 61. Although the percentage of people who smoke has declined since the mid-1980s, what percentage of adult Canadian females continue to smoke regularly? A. Approximately 14%. B. Approximately 20%. C. Approximately 33%. D. Approximately 42%. It's a approximately 14%. Question 62. What is the long-term success rate for those who try to quit smoking A 15% B 25% C 50% D 75% It's B 25% Question 63 Canadian children only spend approximately 14 minutes exercising after school. Why is the lack of exercise related to physical health problems? A regular exercise increases contact with important social supports. B regular exercise acts a buffer that reduces the physiological effects of stress. C regular exercises negatively correlated with drug and alcohol use. D regular exercise improves self-esteem and confidence. It's B regular exercise acts a buffer that reduces the physiological effects of stress. Question 64. Which of the following is not a benefit attributed to a regular exercise program? A. Enhanced cardiovascular fitness that reduces susceptibility to cardiovascular problems. B. Weight control that reduces the risk of problems such as diabetes. C. Significantly lower levels of inflammation that is chronic. D. Improved immune function and lowered susceptibility to viral infections. It's the improved immune function and lowered susceptibility to viral infections so the actual benefits are a enhanced cardiovascular fitness that reduces susceptibility to cardiovascular problems b weight control that reduces the risk of problems such as diabetes c significantly lower levels of inflammation that is chronic. Question 65. How is HIV, the virus that causes AIDS? Typically spread A through sharing food with an infected an individual B through person-to-person -person contact involving the exchange of bodily fluids C through non-casual contact, such as hugging or kissing D through bacteria that enter through open or exposed wounds. It's B through person-to-person -person contact involving the exchange of bodily fluids. Question 66. Fred is a 25-year-old non-smoker. His twin brother Forrest has been smoking an average of two packs a day for the past four years. Compared to Fred, what is Forrest's estimated life expectancy? A 7 to 8 years shorter B 9 to 10 years shorter C 11 to 12 years shorter D 13 to 14 years shorter. It's D 13 to 14 years shorter. Question 67. How many minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity does the World Health Organization recommend a 90 minutes a week b 120 minutes a week c 150 minutes a week d 200 minutes a week it's c 150 minutes a week question 68 what drug causes the greatest physical damage in the population a alcohol b heroin c barbiturates d prescription pain medication it's a alcohol question 69 in Canada which group was at the highest risk of exposure to HIV A men who have sex with men B heterosexual couples C drugs users who share needles D individuals who received transfusions of infected blood. It's A men who have sex with men. Question 70. Susan is 3 years old and currently spends most of her day in front of the computer or television. Which of the following is not associated with too much screen time? A decreased cognitive development B increased risk of obesity C decreased social development D increased risk of autism. 
It's D so the following are actually associated with too much screen time A decreased cognitive development B increased risk of obesity C decreased social development. Question 71. What do studies suggest about people who tend to report more symptoms of illness A they are low in anxiety and neuroticism B they are high in anxiety but low in neuroticism C they are low in anxiety but low in neuroticism D they are high in anxiety and neuroticism. It's D they are high in anxiety and neuroticism. Question 72. What has not been cited as a reason for the tendency to procrastinate in the face of a medical emergency? A. The significance of their symptoms is misinterpreted. B. People are concerned about how they will look to others if the problem is not significant. C. People are concerned over whether health insurance will cover the cost of treatment. D. People worry about bothering their physician with something trivial. It's C. People are concerned over whether health insurance will cover the cost of treatment. Question 73. Who has most actively investigated people's reactions to illness and compliance with medical advice? A. Martin Seligman B. Shelley Taylor C. Hans Sell I. D. Robin D. Matteo. It's D. Robin D. Matteo for A. Martin Seligman. He investigated how people give up with stress for B. Shelley Taylor investigated the link between positive illusions and mental health and well-being. For C. Hans Sell I. He investigated general adaptation syndrome. Question 74. What is least likely to be a barrier to effective provider-patient communication? A. The use of technical terminology. B. The length of time allotted for each medical visit. C. The patient provider gender match. D. A patient's concern over his or her medical condition. It's C. The patient provider gender match. Question 75. What does research indicate about the rate of non-adherence to medical advice? A. It may occur less than 10% of the time. B. It may occur 15-20% to of the time. C. It may occur 30-50% to of the time. D. It may occur over 65% of the time. It's C. It may occur 30-50% to of the time. Question 76. On a recent personality test, Samantha had a very high score on neuroticism. What is one consequence of her high neuroticism? A. Samantha is more likely to interpret unpleasant bodily sensations as symptoms of illness. B. Samantha is more likely to associate all stressful events as the cause of her illnesses. C. Samantha is less likely to develop serious disorders because she is so aware of her symptoms. D. Samantha is less likely to have high levels of immune function because of her emotional instability. It's a Samantha is more likely to interpret unpleasant bodily sensations as symptoms of illness. Question 77. Which of the following is not one of the reasons that people tend to procrastinate when they are faced with a medical emergency? A. They downplay the significance of their symptoms. B. They are reluctant to disrupt plans that have already been made. C. They focus on trivial details that could be delayed until later. D. They are concerned whether the treatment will be painful or inconvenient. It's D. They are concerned whether the treatment will be painful or inconvenient. Question 78. According to research, how many medical patients leave their doctor's offices without understanding what they have been told and what they are supposed to do? A. Not very many. B. Many. C. Almost none. D. Less than 10%. It's B. Many. Question 79. Janelle has been worried about a number of symptoms that she has been experiencing for the past month. She is very concerned that the symptoms are a sign of a serious cancer. Based on the research into people's reactions to illness, what will Janelle most likely do as a result of her concern over the meaning of her symptoms? A. Use overcompensation to help her cope with her concerns. B. Show signs of learned helplessness. C. Be non-compliant with the instructions she receives from her physician. D. Be somewhat evasive and talking with her medical care provider. It's D. Be somewhat evasive and talking with her medical care provider.